Aha. Right team, we are at the One Garden Stanmore Park in Brighton, where we have put a number of things into their greenhouse that I've just walked into. And I was gonna show you around because what these guys are doing is really impressive. Stanmer Park is very historical. It's been around since the 18th century and uh, obviously Plumpton Agricultural College is absolutely world renowned for what it does. So we're just gonna wander around this greenhouse. I'm gonna show you what they've done. This is a commercial greenhouse they're using as much for their garden wary type products that they sell here but also growing lots of leafy greens, lots of micro herbs, things like that. So let's have a wander around. So, to my left, we've got 24 towers in here. Now we've just installed a second batch, which are these ones here. They are about to go on stream. They already had 10, really enjoy growing with them over the summer period and have therefore doubled the size and we're likely to then go and put another 10 in over here. So we have these ones that are nearly plumbed in, but not quite there yet. And then down here, we can see some of their stuff. Look, perfect timing for you. It's a lovely pak choy plant that, that we've taken out. I think that's probably me being naughty, actually. I'm gonna put him back in again, right here. I was showing some students. So, 22 towers, we've got uh, leafy greens, we've got some um, red sorrel, we've got, look at these strawberries, really interesting. Strawberries are really strong. I mean, this is like, we're moving into October, right? And they're growing incredibly well. They're actually then going to be uh, overwintered in this tower, because normally with strawberries, they basically, you take the top off and let them die back in the soil and then they come back of their own volition. But obviously with aeroponics, it's a slightly different thing. So with these, we're leaving them in there, but I mean, they're seriously good, good plants. And this one here, really interesting. Look at that, amazing. I don't actually think I've seen anywhere else that's done lemon in what they're doing. Really, really impressive. Uh, and the really nice, decorative feature at the top of this thing, but obviously just absolutely delicious as well. Below them, back to um, red sorrel. And then this is the one of their tomato plants that's done really well over the uh, summer period. The one behind it is still producing a whole load of tomatoes. As you can see, still flowering, October. It's the whole greenhouse growing bit. It just changes the dynamic greatly. But they're looking really, really healthy. I'm not sure what they're going to do. I mean, usually with tomatoes, like my outdoor ones have gone to blights. I mean, hit by blights is a normal seasonal thing and you then move on. But these guys, I think they're going to continue growing them for a period. So that's all of the towers. Um, really impressed with the way that they've set them up. They've using all of the produce for both their farm shop, which is our, to our left, and their restaurant to their behind me. And we're going to be as a, next year, we're putting another 10 on stream and then another 10 after that, which will be producing salad bags for their farm shop and then a lot more produce for the restaurant. So then we're gonna turn around and just have a look at this rather interesting thing, which is a, basically it's called a flood and drain. And this is a big old bench. I'm not gonna move this one, but you can see, this is a flood and drain bench where you would put plants all the way down it. It's on it moves back and forward. So you can then stack things. You can walk down the center path to get to it. And underneath it, there is a big bowser of water at the other end. And that will then flood water up onto the um, uh, top. You can see it's got these channels. We'll flood it up, hold it for say four minutes, water whatever's on it, and then dissipates back down again. Takes care of your entire watering needs. Super simple to put in and massively effective to then operate and reduce labor costs. So then going this way, we've got, well, this is a tower garden home that we lent them over the summer period to just show people in the farm shop, worked really well. And then let's move on to these items. So we built all of this for them. And what we've got here is our flood and drain system. It's essentially what everyone's going on about vertical growing in these big warehouses and whatever. This is essentially exactly the same thing. 
it's just a more simplified version of where they're going to. With this, we can flood each of these trays here. The water comes up, floods into that one, floods into that one, floods into that, and then goes back into the main tank once it's had its required dose. You can change all of those parameters. With this light here, we put four lights on each of the levels. They then provide easily enough uh, light par to then be able to really get those seedlings. This is generally what we would use for seedlings. It's a really good way of maximizing the space. The beauty of those towers is you're producing 950% more produce in the space using those towers. And with this, therefore, you're looking at doing the same thing with the production of seedlings. So they produce the seedlings on here, and then they just walk them over to the towers over there, and out they go. And you can see some of them here. I mean, we've got some lovely produce growing here. This is watercress. All of these, you can see, that's a little watercress plant and a big old tray of those. Got kale, got Russian kale, more watercress. Um, what is that? Spinach. And well, they've done well with that. Spinach is generally quite difficult to propagate. This is pak choy. So it's got a good level ready to go on the towers when we are at that point. So this one is really interesting for us. This is a, it's a controlled environment tent so that we can overwinter a lot of their products that they don't want to have to spend massive amounts of electricity heating this entire greenhouse. So we've built this to basically save them quite a lot of money and it's a brilliant way of um, either just having this as your grow for maybe you're doing um, spinach or whatever you want to do in a, in a smaller environment. But with this, we're basically doing as much so that they don't have to spend huge amounts of money heating all of this they can do this. So let's have a look at this. I'm gonna go in here and actually, do you know, before I start on that, we're gonna sit there. That unit there is a carbon filter. And that is where air is pulled into this environment. And by there being a carbon filter, this greenhouse is quite dusty. So it's a brilliant way of then bringing air in, but making that air really clean to go into the environment. So it comes in there. And as you can see, comes in that bottom corner, leaves, it's extracted out in that top corner over there. So that's how the air works. We're doing about the, room, the, the, the volume of the room every minute to keep the room moving. Down at the bottom, we've got a centrifugal humidifier. And the blue tank behind that is then providing a week's worth of humidity for this. It's all operated by a brain, essentially, which is the thing up here. So that controls both the temperature and the humidity. So too hot and the fans are going to go on more, too humid and it's going to suck out more air. It basically sorts out the entire of that environment and really quite simply. The lighting, we've got 18 watt full spectrum LED lights. They're super efficient, but they're easily good enough for providing enough lighting for smaller plants or seedlings or whatever you want to do. And in this environment, they'll easily be good enough as well for bringing some of these indoors and overwintering them here. This is a flood and drain system. So the water is basically coming in from a big 700 litre tank outdoors, which is the one you're looking at now. It gets piped in, comes in the big black tank, comes into this environment, and then basically it floods all of the trays that you can see in here for an appropriate amount of time as long as you actually want it. So let's say it'll come in and it'll flood it for three or four minutes. Then it's going to dissipate out and it's going to then go back into that tank. And it's a really efficient way of making it so that on a labor perspective as well, it should run itself, essentially. So essentially, we've got the thing working through the brain up here. All of this thing is controlled in that environment. There's a sensor up here, which then controls all of the different elements to it. And that, my friends, is about it. It's, I say simple, it is relatively simple as a system. As I say, uh, the whole vertical industry, it's all a massive race for data at the moment and doing things so you're knowing every single small thing 
Now, I get that to a degree, but at the same time, for something like this, in this environment, this is easily good enough. And you can do some really impressive grows in something like this. And it's actually, a, I mean, it's pretty cost effective as well. So that's our tent. And I hope that has been of interest to you. If it's something that you're interested in and we can provide it for you, then absolutely no problem at all getting to contact. But as you've seen, it's actually pretty simple to do yourself if you're outside of the UK. All right. Anyway, it's been great. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.